Shaka Hislop's been hanging out with me all day. Shaka, we've been taking in some matches from La Liga straight to the Premier League. And I know you nearly fell asleep in one, but the exciting <laughs> one was definitely this one in Syria. Inter Milan up against Bologna. Bologna getting the better of Inter in this one. Two goals to one. First of all, thoughts on the game? Because it seems like it all happened in the second half, really. It, it did. Listen, the first half went as you would expect. Uh, I thought Inter dominated without being um, all that spectacular. And then all of a sudden, um, you, you felt that trend was going to continue in, in the second half. Soriano seeing a straight red after he said something to the referee. Uh, he and, and Gagliardini got in a little bit of a tangle. The ref gave a foul against Soriano when I, I, I didn't see anything wrong. But Soriano went um, above the call of duty, so to speak. <laughs> In clearly seeing something that, that upset, upset the referee and, and he saw a straight red. And you thought at that point, Inter would just, would just troll this. But it was anything but. Um, Juara gets, gets a goal against, a little bit against the run of play. And then Inter get, have themselves get a, get a man sent off after, after two yellows. Then Alexis Sanchez comes off the bench, gives the ball away cheaply in midfield. Bologna goes down the other end. Barrow scores. Bologna in, in the lead, and, and it, it left Inter scrambling, looking for answers. The best coming after an exchange between Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez later on, which the goalkeeper brilliantly saved. But then it, it, just, it just left you wanting so much more from Inter. And after everything um, you saw from them early on in the season, Antonio Conte and the signings he made, they, they just, again, haven't lived up to, to the promise or, or any kind of expectation. And... and leave you feeling, feeling a little bit flat about who they are and the direction that they're going under Antonio Conte. Well, like you said, Inter, of course, leaving us um, wanting a bit more. This loss does just keep them in third place. But is that kind of now their new goal that needs to be? Because surely they can't concentrate on trying to make a run for the title, especially after this loss. No, the, the, the title is, is long gone. And all of a sudden, they've opened up an... Uh, a, a window for, for Atalanta to maybe pip them in, into third spot. Atalanta, who continues to be the fairy tale story of Serie A, not just see this season, but last, the fairy tale story in Champions League, where they, they are still alive and, and um, you, you write them off at, at your absolute peril. And, and fifth place is, they won't finish fifth either. So they're going to be in the Champions League uh, spots. But you don't want to start early and having to play in, in, the, in the qualifying rounds of, of next season's Champions League competition either. So that's a little bit of an incentive, for want of a, of a, a better word, for, for Inter. But they, they're allowing Atalanta a look in when maybe, maybe they shouldn't. And speaking of allowing pressure, I suppose, to get to you, Lautaro Martinez, let's just talk about him really quick. Since the restart, he's only managed one goal in his last five games. He's heavily linked with Barcelona. Do you think it is kind of that, Shaka? you think some of the pressure is getting to him or is it just, you know, the usual rust that we have seen some footballers dealing with since coming back from the pandemic break? No, I, I put that down to the latter, Alexis. I, I keep offering that excuse to players and teams that like coming out to this break because it's so unprecedented and you're not quite sure what to expect, what to expect from them. Lautaro Martinez continues to be an incredible talent and you understand why Barcelona are as heavily linked with him as, as, as they have been and will continue to be this summer, I'm sure. I, I think any club is, is willing to have him. Th that is not, is not the, the question for me. It's how he adjusts his own direct style in fitting in uh, to this Barcelona team that continues to be built around and function around Lionel Messi. That has been the, the greater challenge for incredibly talented players coming now, into to, to Barcelona. For, for now, I, listen, I understand that at some point Lionel Messi is going to have, have to hang his boots up and, and Barcelona are going to have to figure out what life for them looks like after him. But for now, you've seen incredibly talented players go there and struggle. You hope that that doesn't happen to Lautaro Martinez, that he can, can figure out what his role is, both in, in, in the short term with Lionel Messi and maybe in the longer term if he's there to, to see Lionel Messi eventually retire. But, but let's be honest, Messi, like Ronaldo, we've been saying that they're going to be retiring for the last four or five years, yet somehow... They continue to go from strength to strength. They're sticking in Syria. Look at, at Cristiano Ronaldo's own return this season. Mm -hmm. 25 goals. First player to do that since 1961, I think I'm correct in saying. 
you, you can see both of, both of those playing on for long after you and I maybe are done speaking about them, Alexis. And that's a concern. <laughs> that's a concern. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.